Uh, our approach is nonpartisan, and our approach is non. We don't try to. We look for a solution. We're not against anything. We, we know what we're for. Our members of the Congress and the staff actually like to see us because we don't go in there, oh, you stupid son of a you know. <laughs> and so I would, I would ask the, you know, the people in the pews, what do you love about the earth? What do you love about Portland? What do you love about Oregon? And if you love it that much, do you want to save, save it? You cannot save the earth unless you savor the earth. And I kept being awoken at four o'clock in the morning, and God was like, "What are you doing about this?" Like this, this issue was very heavy on my heart. And what I love about CCL is they train us to really create relationships with our members of Congress and to talk to other people about <coughs> climate. Respectful conversation. I feel like that's really lacking in our society right now. One of the great um, successes of CCL thus far has been creating a bipartisan climate solutions caucus in the House of Representatives. Always bipartisan. We have members all all different political stripes as part of our organization. So. Kirsten was able to get Susan Bonamici to join the climate caucus. Yes. Well it wasn't just me. It well, was our it, it was, was our group. It's a, it's a, it's we now have Blumenauer and Bonamici on the caucus and we're hoping that other Oregon legislators will join as well. Is anybody taking a crack at Greg Walden? Yes, that's, that's um, yes, happening. That's that's on the agenda. <laughs> and what motivates different people is different. So maybe they care about the next generation. Maybe they care about polar bears. Um, maybe they care about forest management um, or sea rise or the the poorest people, right? People that live in island nations and things too that are adversely affected. Um, and I think that's where Pope Francis comes comes in, right? <coughs> With his encyclical. Mm -hmm. Carbon fee would be collected and then would go into escrow, and then every month would be paid out uh, evenly to every household, okay? So that the person who is flipping burgers at McDonald's would get the same amount as Bill Gates. The person flipping McDonald's would get more money back than the burden caused by the increase in energy cost. Well, Bill Gates wouldn't get even close to what he has. Uh, and it, and it, it, it helps it helps the people who are going to get hurt the most. The goal is to <clears throat> make fossil fuels more expensive and renewables less expensive. And what's more appealing about a carbon fee and dividend versus cap and trade is it's predictable. That you think people on the left and right will see that there's tremendous value in it, protects the poor, creates jobs, stimulates the economy, and gets reduces our carbon emissions. China is closing 200 coal-fired nuclear, I mean coal-fired plants over the next four years. They are the largest manufacturer of solar panels right now. They're the largest manufacturer of windmills. We spend 80 billion dollars a year protecting oil choke points, such as the Straits of Hormuz the Philippine Sea, the Suez Canal, places like that. We buy $150 billion of oil from people that don't like us. So it's a market-based approach. So basically, Exxon's of the world then say, I'm gonna spend money on research and development to look at other ways. It's expected to grow over 2.1 million jobs over 20 years. Like, is this possible? And with God, all things are possible. I know that sounds silly and trite, but in my heart, that's what I believe. I, I believe that we were put on earth to be stewards of the earth.